Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Yes, the channel that dares to unlock the mysteries of home distilling. We're going to answer some questions today. And this is going to revolve all around volume. How much do I get? Come all you moonshiners if you want to hear about the kind of booze that they serve around here. After Stay that, in brief introduction. And we're here to talk about volume. And it's really a common question that we get on a regular basis. So I thought it'd be interesting, or probably really more important, to kind of share with you some, a, a few math figures, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but really a good explanation about what can you potentially expect to receive? Um, because that is the age old question. Um, you know, a lot of our videos, instead of just sitting around and dreaming up something to do, um, we base them off of um, the majority or the preponderance of certain questions that kind of come up all the time so that way I can understand what are the real aspects or the real interests or maybe those empty spaces in knowledge about home distilling. So let's get right to it. Um, you know, everyone always asks the question, George, if I run a five gallon still, how much am I going to get out of it? Well, you know, that is all dependent. And what do I mean by dependent? Well, you have to have a starting point, and then you have your process, and then, of course, you have your ending point. Let me give you an example here. Now, you know, we just came back from Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and oh, by the way, let me digress for a moment. Uh-huh. After five days of uh, alcoholic bliss, uh, uh, I have a new awakened, oh gosh, appreciation for the moonshine community. No, it's not new. I've always had it. Uh, this, what a, what a great, great place to visit in Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge and all those distilleries. I came back and I ran my still. Now I've got an automated still. Sorry. Okay. Uh, but this, the same process holds true for manually operated still as well. And I ran 18 gallons and it started off with 11% alcohol by volume in my mash. And I've got all these jars laid out here to show you what I collected. And I did this all in one day yesterday. It took me about three hours. That doesn't include the heat up time. Uh, and I've got seven quarts of moonshine. And it starts at 140 proof because I was running it in pot still mode. And I stop at 100 proof. So I've got seven full jars. This jar is my head's. Uh, now, this was all done. This is a computer operated machine, so it, it makes the cuts precisely. Of course, my four shots were already gone, but these are the heads. These are my hearts, and these two jars would represent the tails. So, George, why did you put out two empty jars? I don't collect tails, um, and, and it's a personal choice. Uh, you don't have to collect tails. Uh, I just don't collect tails because. I don't know, like you, I don't drink them. Uh, I don't use them for anything else. Um, and it's, to me, it's just, it's an additional waste of time. Now there are, there are times when tails are, could be a benefit, okay? But we're not gonna get into that today. But it, it, as a general rule, I don't collect tails cause I just, I'm not going to do anything with it. Um, and I'm definitely not, definitely not gonna throw it into the next batch. That probably deserves some explanation. If I have a container, what do you think of the whiteboard, huh? Yeah, I had to, I had to sex it up just a little bit. If I have a container, all right, a fermenter, and I've got a fresh mash here. Oh, let's just throw, for as an example, I've got five gallons. And what is that? If for those in Europe, I know it's what's 21, 23 liters. It all depends on how you're measuring and when you, you, you got it. Okay. Uh, so I think it's 19 liters. I have to look that up again. Uh, but let's say, for instance, I have two jars. You know, a certain portion, only a certain portion of this, as an example, let's say it's 10% alcohol by volume. If it's a 10%, ABV, here's the question of the day. How much alcohol is in there? If you do the math real quick in your head, it's 0.5 gallons. 
or of course a half a gallon. All right, so you have a half a gallon of alcohol. And the rest is what? You know it, water. Okay? So in that half a gallon of alcohol, once I collect, and I'll use this as a great example, we'll get to that in just a second, you know about the last two to three percent of that is what we consider tails. And what are what what do the what do tails consist of? Well, tails consist of all those byproducts from the yeast, your fusel oils, and they're actually a slippery oil-based product that doesn't vaporize with ethanol, but it vaporizes with some portions of ethanol when the concentration of the ethanol gets so low and you're still trying to pull that out. So you pull out what we call tails. Okay, and the tails are the things that we did. Normally, we would just say, they ain't drinking that, I don't want no tails. Okay, uh, because tails are not good. Uh, they taste horrible, they smell horrible, they're slippery between your fingers. They usually smell like wet cardboard. Uh, they've been described many, many different ways. You know, and it all depends on what you put in. I sometimes I'll say it smells like ass. And if it's really bad, what does it smell like? You know, two asses. All right. So in this last two to three percent of your run that's left here, what would happen if I add more? Well, that makes this about five or six percent. So what am I doing? What am I theoretically, what am I actually doing? I'm infecting a good batch with tails so that at the end of this run, I can I actually have to leave that in the still anyway, or I've got to collect an extra two jars that I'm not going to use anyway. You follow me? So for the sake of conservatism, in a way, you know, conserve your energy, conserve your time, conserve your effort. Um, if you collect tails and you have a purpose for it, it's all on you. But if you're not going to consume them, well then... Why waste the time? Hmm. So what do we what do we know? We know that, of course, tails can show up anytime. In general, okay, in general, uh, tails will start to show up below 100 proof. So if you're a 100 proof or higher, um, it's more likely than not that you will not have tails. Okay, that'll be you'll you'll still be in your heart's run. But as soon as you drop below 100, well, now the danger zone, okay? You've got a danger zone there. You've got anywhere from 100 down to about 80 proof where this is, you're in the danger zone of potentially collecting tails, okay? And it starts off here, and let's say this is the level of intensity of tails or potential, if you'll pick them up or not, and that, if you graphed it, it would start to increase dramatically as you get to about 80 proof. And below 80 proof, uh, you're almost assured to be starting to collect tails. Now, how else do we collect tails uh, during a run? Hmm. You can collect tails during a run by doing something as simple as trying to hurry up hmm. if we're running our still and I always use this as just a, uh, this is just an example of a still it's not actually it may not look exactly like yours but that's okay because stills are comes in, in many different styles but and we're running our still and we're tracking our temperature right here now why are we tracking that temperature well because that's called the point of no return that's where your vapors exit the still into your condenser well we know that scientifically at 173 degrees, ethanol is vaporized, okay? So we're tracking that to be around 173 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> now, who we, yeah, yeah, see, now we start getting into really deep. But really, it's not so deep if you stop and think about it. There are stills that run at 184. I've got one that runs at 184 degrees, start to finish, and it loves it. I love it, but I know that. That's my sweet spot. It's just because of the design of my still. Uh, some will run as high as 190. That's okay. 
Okay, that's perfectly okay. But once you start having your product come out and it's collected in your jar, if, you're, if you have a high proof and you're running your temperatures to an, in, a, in an extreme, let's say for instance, your still normally runs at 184 and you're running it at 195, well, chances are what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to push some of those tails because the, the, the energy and the heat inside that still is high enough to force those fusel oils to stay attached and drag through with your ethanol. So can you have tails at 160 proof? Tails at 160 proof? Is that possible? Why, absolutely, yes. Yes, that's possible. Um, is it likely? Well, if you're running it slow and methodically, no, it's impossible. But if you're pushing the envelope and you're trying to get that distillate to come out really, really fast, and you've increased the temperature to a degree, to that degree where it's pushing instead of allowing vapors to flow, well, then you're going to wind up with tails. Now, how do we determine, and I get this a lot, well, George, uh, golly, I got a jar, and it was 110 proof. Uh, how do I know that there are no tails in here? Well, there, there, besides having a scientific method or a, an automated system to make those cuts for you, the only surefire method to determine that is to cut it. Okay? If you take your jar, and you in here you've got 110 proof. Okay? And that's how much you have in there. And you want to cut that to, let's say, 80 proof, 40% alcohol by volume. And so what happens is, is you add the appropriate amount of water, and of course using your hydrometer, your proof and trail hydrometer, you're measuring it, and it goes to here, and now this becomes 80 proof, and you're happy with the proof, but then you look at your distillate, and it's cloudy. Well, if it's cloudy, that is the first indication of tails. You have tails inside that ethanol. Um, and no, there's no way to get it out, okay? Once it's there, it's there. Those are, th those are oils, and those fusel oils are not visible in a high content of alcohol because they are spread out. They're long-chain fatty acids, and they spread out, so you can't see them. But once you add water to it, you drop the alcohol level down, they start to clump. And as they start to clump back together, they become visible, known as being cloudy. Does that help? I hope so. Now, we promised to get to this run. We promised to get to my seven quarts of absolutely pure, delectable the elixir that we're going to work with for the rest of the week. Um, and Here's now, on to what I have right here as a demonstration. Um, and in, as an explanation, I'll, I'll show you how this actually worked out for me, all right? Because I started off with, these are my figures. I had 18 gallons. Okay, I had 18 gallons of mash, and that was at 13% ABV, alcohol by volume. Okay, so that was, that was my starting in data point, all right? But with that data point, I know a whole lot. I can figure out what this should look like on the end before that even happens. At least I can get a great, a good idea. And what does that do for us? Well, that allows us to predict how long is it going to take us and when should I start really paying attention, you know, as opposed to just allowing things to happen on their own. Well, it works out r relatively simple. All right. Now, now, but at 18 gallons at 13% alcohol by volume. Now, keep in mind that this is a little high. Uh, I'm more in line of like an 11, 11 and a half, maybe 12-ish or so. But I hit 13 on this one. I, I'm okay with that. Uh, but remember, the higher alcohol by volume, we're going to get to that. So with my calculator, all I've got to do is calculate quickly. Watch this. 18 times 0 0.13 
equals 2.34 gallons. All right, so 2.34 gallons. Here's my example of 18 gallons. All right, 2.34 gallons of that. And that is somewhere in the neighborhood, somewhere, somewhere in the neighborhood of what about right here. 2.34 gallons is pure ethanol, okay? We know that because the alcohol by volume is 13% of 18 gallons, all right? Now, what have I collected? Well, I collected 1.75. If I take 1.75 gallons from that 2.34 gallons minus 1.75, leaves me with 0.59 gallons of potential. I mean, that's what I've got left in here. Remember we talked about that with, at, at the beginning of this video, we actually showed you that this little bit down here is going to be alcohol, yes, but it's also going to be loaded with tails. All right? It's going to be loaded with tails. So um, now let's look in this example. Oh, now how much is that? 0.59? Oh. This is easy. 0.59 divided by 18 equals, you're going to love this, 3.2% ABV. Please, please don't concern yourself with 3.2% ABV left over and it's left in, what do you take, 2.34 from 18 gallons? Uh, what's that? Uh, about 15, a little over 15 gallons. 2.3.2 percent of that is tails. That, that's minuscule. Okay, that's minuscule. What does that represent? Well, 0.59 gallons. Look at there. There's a half. All right. Of what I didn't collect. Those are the tails. So, and that's why I don't collect them. Again, as a re just a rehash. I, I don't use them. I don't drink them. I don't want them. They smell nasty. They, they, they feel oily. Um, they turn cloudy when you cut them. They're, to, to me, they're virtually useless. So it's the stuff you really don't want. You want the hearts. Right. So that accounts for that. Now, but if that, so that's minus 0.5, leaves me with 0 0.09 gallons. Well, look at this. So my, heart, uh, my heads, and remember my four shots. Uh, it it kind of, does that really make sense now? Does that kind of balance it out? So out of 18 gallons of mash at 13% ABV, and you could this could be any number. This, this could be any alcohol by volume that you have developed, okay? Uh, I get 2.34 gallons. 1.75 gallons is what I collected because I stopped at 100 proof. Remember, below 100 proof is you start to run into the dangers of collecting tails, and you don't want to mix those up because you can't get them out. Once they're there, they're there. Um, one method that a lot of people use is that once they get to that 100 proof, they keep trying to squeak out a little bit more, you go to a smaller jar. And you keep going to them smaller jars, and you keep collecting it until you notice that there's tails, and then you stop there. All right, so that you get that just that little bit more. Okay, now, so, so have, have we, we've come full circle in describing uh, what I have, what I was able to predict. My prediction came out exactly on the money. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more, sometimes it'll be a little bit less, and it's all dependent upon how you run your still. Oh, you know, I love it when we're able to use a little bit of math, just a little bit, in order to put you on the path to success. Um, let's erase this. And for the so, let's look at it this way and um, get a kind of get a feel for determining volume based on a beginning portion. All right? You already know that we have that, remember that, I talked about this before, that brick wall, that divide between Alcohol by volume and proof. ABV versus 
proof. What is the relationship between those two? The relationship between those two is absolutely nothing. Okay, you've got this brick wall that separates them. Okay, so what does ABV tell us? ABV tells us that after fermentation, we are left with a, per a certain percentage of alcohol by volume. And let's use an example of five gallons at 10%, okay? I've got five gallons at 10% ABV. So how much alcohol is in that five gallon container? There's your five gallon mark. How much alcohol is there? Well, 10% of five gallons is going to be 0.5. That's going to be a half a gallon. So right down here, you're going to have a half a gallon of ethanol. Folks, you're not going to have any more, okay? To me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you do, how you do it, how you hold your mouth when you do it. It's, it's just, it's, there's not going to be more than that. So you, you can no longer, now you cross this line, you can't make any more alcohol, all right? What are we going to do on this side of the chart? We've made it here, okay? When we get to the other side of the chart, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to take this from this. We're going to separate these two. And we'll take this, we'll wind up here. Now, invariably, since we know we can't collect it pure at 100%, all right, 200 proof, depending on how your process runs will depend on has a direct, a direct effect on proof. Now, we already know ahead of time. We just, we, we don't even assume this. We just know it. We know that since we're not going to collect 100%, that we're going to collect this ethanol, and we're going to collect a portion of that water that goes with it. And there's a reason for that. That's in another video. Uh, it's, there's a lot of things molecularly that's going on with uh, science and physics. And th but trust me, it, you're going to have ethanol and you're going to always have some water. So let's, we'll use a pot still as an example, okay? In a pot still, if you're running at 140 proof, that is equivalent to, that is actually 70% alcohol. That's 70% alcohol by volume, and the remainder of whatever you got is 30% H2O, water, okay? And then I say, for instance, you run it all the way down to 100 proof. That means that you've got 50% alcohol, okay? And you've got 50% water. Okay, that's how that works out. Now, but... The point is, is you're not going to ever make any more alcohol. You're just going to adjust the purity of what you collect. So, <laughs> it, it, you know, the age-old question, and I get this a lot too, is, is well, I'm collecting it, uh, the best I can get is 120 proof, and I, I want to get a higher proof. Well, uh, usually my question is, why do you want a higher proof? Uh, well, because I want to get more alcohol. Well, you don't get more alcohol. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, you don't get more alcohol, you get a more pure alcohol. So let's say, for instance, we drew this ethanol out of here, this half a gallon. Let's say, for instance, oh, I love this part of it. So you add these two together, look, it's just this, look, if you add these two together, that's 100% of whatever your jar size is, okay? That's what that is. And same thing with this one, is 100% of your jar size. Now, uh, what is the difference? Well, the difference is the purity level. 100 proof versus 140 proof. Now, when you collect, when you collect 140 proof from start to finish, you will collect less because going in, you're always collecting 70% of it is alcohol and only 30% of it is water. You're going to run out of alcohol a lot quicker. If you're collecting 70% of this, you're going to run out of alcohol a whole lot quicker than if you're only collecting 50% of it. Does it kind of make sense? So what will happen is, is that you'll wind up with a jar, and that'll be here. It'll be 70% ethanol and 30% water. But in this jar, you're going to have 
and it'll be full, you'll have 50% water and 50% ethanol. All right? So you're going to have more alcohol in here, but at 50%, as opposed to here, you'll have less alcohol, but it'll be at 70%. At the end of the day, these will both equal the exact same amount of alcohol that you started with. Okay, you can't create alcohol. All you can do is ferment and allow the yeast to make alcohol as a byproduct of the fermentation process. When you walk over to this side of the equation, what we want to do is we want to separate it. We want to take the two and separate them as best we can. The more pure we separated, the higher the proof. The less pure we separated, the lower the proof. That's how the separation process works in this equation, because we've got these two sides of the equation. We've got alcohol by volume and proof, the difference between the two. Well, we hope we've answered all your questions. Yes, if you get an opportunity, please subscribe, share us with your friends. Love being back. I'll tell you what, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, if you ever get an opportunity to go out to see those wonderful folks, yes, sir, they've got plenty of shots for you to taste and try and so much to do, so much amusement for the family and friends. We love being with you. Happy distilling.